Alrighty. Yo, what is up, you guys? Welcome back to another video. We're going to be reacting to MKVB's activation exercises. I love his intro. And uh, Jordan... Message me. How's the solar feeling? Jordan, right here, his trainer. On the right, let me get his Pretty face. Icy. All right, so this is actually Jordan. He messaged me on Instagram thanking me for the reaction to the video. So I was like, oh, sweet. He was correcting me with the name, so I appreciate it. Um, Hey, any, any feedback, I'm open to it. I feel like watching this will help them out uh reacting like to see what the viewers are reacting to and kind of like what we're thinking um again this is going to be solid content looking forward to it this is this is the activation video so if you guys haven't seen the mobility video that they made go ahead and check it out or the reaction video um i'll try to put the links in the bio i keep forgetting but like you know i'm, I'm working on it um yeah so we're on the activation exercises video this is the second part of the video i'm pretty sure there's gonna be like four or five parts of it and I want to add something. When I mentioned having the core exercises after activation, the only reason, that's my perspective, right? That's just based off how I train because I personally don't like doing core at the end of my workout because I'm exhausted by the end of my workout. So that's just me personally, just to make sure I do my core exercises. I like to do that before my strength training, before my plyo work. Um, so yeah, just to clarify. Again, if you guys are new here, make sure to hit that red subscribe button and like the video for the YouTube algorithm. Uh, let's get into the video. This is my first time watching this video, so let's see what they got. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So just finished up some, doing some mobility work. Yeah, like, like super sticky and like, yeah. so yeah, we'll go through activation with just this one band. It's the same thing, like, I don't know, maybe $5 band that everybody can kind of buy. So Sweet. we'll use one band to kind of get the whole body kind of warmed up for this workout. And then maybe the next video we'll do. Some not bad. So not bad, not banned, not bad. So I, I want to get Jordan's perspective. So Jordan, if you could message me on Instagram, I kind of want to know what you think of these bands, like these rubber bands, right? Compared to the fabric bands, what are your thoughts? Personally, I like the fabric bands, but sometimes they're very stiff to the point where I don't get that full range of motion. Like I can't really extend my leg when I'm doing like, I don't know, side shuffles or, you know, whatever. Or using the one, the bands that like wrap around your knees where it has like a kind of like a fabric strap. I have to show a video. I can't really explain it through the internet. This is weird like that. But yeah, let me know what you think of the fabric ones. I, I, I want to know from another perspective of another trainer. I think this is important to know for the viewers to kind of get an understanding of like, oh, why are these bands so important? But I think he's going to go over that right now. Something different, but sweet. We'll start with some clamshells. So another good exercise for the pure two. One's like basic beginner. So simple. We're kind of bending those knees at 90 degrees. Want a nice line between like my heel, my hip and my shoulder. Basically just opening up, really squeezing that glute and then back down. That's like super basic level we start at. Yeah. For I'm, you, we're gonna fire it up a little bit more. Oh jeez. All right, so we're gonna get done. Pause this real quick. So clamshells, very, very standard. That's pretty much for every single athlete. Again, as athletes, whatever sport you're playing, most of the time we are in internal rotation because we have to push our feet into the ground and produce force. This allows us to strengthen our glutes and allows us to Basically, this is another injury prevention exercise for many athletes. The wall, so want a little bit of a bend in this heel is gonna kind of, same thing, that nice 90 degrees. So this glute's gonna be firing for the working. And same thing, just opening up that hip, squeezing for two seconds, and then back down. Sweet. I like this progression. I've actually never seen this progression before. So this is awesome. The fact that he was able to explain, oh, the reason why we're standing on one leg is for stabilization. And same thing, we're still activating the clams, the the glutes for, for the right side. This is great. Again, not a variation I've done before. I'm going to have to try it out during my workout. So this is awesome. I think a lot of athletes don't even know what how to progress clam shows besides laying down. You can put on your hair, hold them out in front. And yeah, so the yeah guys, this isn't a very heavy band, but where I'm feeling it right now is more on my stabilizing leg. Yeah, yeah. The first couple, yeah, it should kind of feel that one. And as you kind of get to the, you know, six, eight, 10, 12 reps on the other side, then you'll probably start firing in that glute. Sorry, off topic, not off topic. But I also want to mention that Jordan has a knee injury from the previous video. He was explaining to me that he He's recovering from a knee injury and he mainly plays beach volleyball. Now the question is, which type of volleyball is better? Indoor 
or beach? I'll let the comment section of the internet answer that question. So yeah, you're doing like a great job of keeping like this knee nice and stable as opposed to letting it cave in. Yeah. It's doing great. Yeah, that's like, I'd say like my knees are pretty damn strong. I don't know if you've seen the way I land after hitting. Sometimes, yeah. Oh, yeah it's <laughs> yeah. terrible, but Just right like, leg kicked out, left yeah. leg just absorbing everything. Yeah, landing. Okay, speaking of the landing, that's totally normal to land on one leg when you're playing sports, especially volleyball. Because a lot of time when, a lot of the times when the ball gets gets set across our body we have to reach on this side and then all our balance is on one leg or ends up going on one leg like i land so hard on my left leg to the point where my left leg is so much stronger than my right leg so i have to remember if i want to like reduce injury in the future and like you know be able to absorb a lot of impact i always try to practice landing on two legs again as a shorter hitter i'm always overreaching and trying to you know, reach as high as I can whenever I hit. And most of those times I have to land on one leg and it's just part of the sport, but it's also important to train single leg movements like this and also single leg landing single. I'm assuming when we get to the plyometrics part of this video, we're going to be seeing a lot of single leg plyos, mainly like the landing variation. And I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of bilateral landing as well. Bilateral meaning landing on two legs, pretty self-explanatory, right? Bilateral, unilateral. Cool. Yeah. Just so much power when you hit you just rotate and then you're yeah i you use know. my whole body pretty mm -hmm. much i'm trying like to get out of it so i can like land square but that's just a bad habit of just like what i picked up from just playing definitely definitely and it's that's one of the that's a hard one to kind of fix too um, yeah without like you said without like taking time off playing and just kind of training his right, right yeah. leg is shaking so much oh yeah never had like look at that shake guys do you guys see the shake the moment he leans forward it's firing up <laughs> It is just firing. Oh. I can just say I, I got a pretty good eye when it comes to this stuff. I've been a trainer for like almost 10 years and like I just have a really good eye for this. <laughs> just being able to see that before he even said anything. I'm just like, yeah, I got an eye for this. So, yeah, this is great. I love these videos. Marcos. Is it Marco? Marcos? Yo, I love your videos, man. If you can make more videos like this, this is like, again, I come from a kinesiology background. So watching you and being able to like and having conversation, right? You being in conversation like this allows me to think of like the science of it and like be able to share this with the volleyball community is just spectacular because not a lot of people are able to explain it. Like when I film my workouts, right? When I film my workouts, I don't like filming my workouts. I don't like talking during my workouts. I don't want to explain what I'm doing because I'm locked in with my workouts. So the fact that you're making this video allows other volleyball athletes to really see what volleyball training is like and why it's important. So again, Thank you for the video. I'm going to keep criticizing you because you're such a nice guy. So yeah, the biggest, the hardest part I'd say about that is not the opening. It's the stabilizing. So, like it's like, you're like, oh, this is not bad. But like what Jordan said, when you're on like your fifth rep and up and you can, you pretty much saw it. My legs were shaking. <laughs> they're shaking it hard. Wasn't a hard exercise. It's just getting warm almost. It gets you. I just want to say, let me just, I, I know I keep cutting the video off, but the stabilizer muscles are so important. These are your foundation muscles, right? If your foundation, if your stabilizers are not activated while you're playing, you are at higher risk of injury. So if they're shaking so much, well, not higher risk, but I'm saying these are basically your injury prevention, even though injury prevention doesn't really exist. These are your injury management exercises. If you have really strong stabilizers, volleyball becomes not easier, but like knowing that you can trust your body to stabilize in positions that are awkward like it puts you in a good position do your stabilizer exercises guys very important i don't even know what to say it's the easiest thing you could do just to be a better volleyball athlete we'll do some hamstring activation now same thing with the band so one band around our feet one band around our ankle hopefully this band doesn't snap on me so want the knees kind of the same thing nice kind of state i'm curious if the if the band snaps on him is that considered like you're too strong i feel like a pr in the gym is when you've snapped the band right that's a new pr it means you got to spend more money to buy heavier bands right you basically hit a new pr doing that able and all i'm trying to think is keeping this knee locked out i really hope my jokes land on the internet because if they don't that sucks but like whatever i'm just gonna let it be knees kind of the same thing nice kind of stable around her feet here. one bound around her ankle hopefully this band doesn't snap on me so want the knees kind of the same thing nice kind of stable and all i'm trying to think is keeping this knee locked out and then i'm just bringing my heel up same thing hold for two seconds you'll feel that I like, knee, like right over on top of the knee and then back down 
Yeah, so basically when you're doing this, keeping the knee in the same spot just to make sure it's you're isolating the, the hamstring. Now, I've never heard of hamstring activation before, but this is actually very, very important because as volleyball athletes, we are very, very quad dominant. Very, very quad dominant. Majority of us, right? So when we're in the gym, our main priority is going to be strengthening our posterior chain, which is going to be the glutes and the hamstrings and our lower back. Those are gonna be our, basic, again, our stabilizer muscles, but also help us with injury prevention. So yeah, this one should kind of fire that insertion. This is a side note, back. but if you get an athlete, like they haven't played volleyball in a while, and then they start playing volleyball, let's say they took 10 years out of, they, they retired for like, they, they retired for like 10 years, right? Came back to the sport, they start playing big jumping exercises. All of a sudden they start saying, oh, I feel my low back, I feel my hip, blah, blah, blah right? Because they're not straight. They haven't done any stabilization for, for their body. They haven't done stabilization work. They haven't worked on landing mechanics. It's been years since they've actually done something for their body to get back into volleyball. So volleyball is a very high impact sport. Whoever says it's not a high impact sport, prove me wrong. Just, we can agree to disagree. Let's talk about it. Right. But volleyball is very, very high impact. So for setting up, you want one of like a band under one foot? Yeah. Under one heel and then yeah, behind the ankle, I guess on the other one. Yeah. And then shoulder width apart is okay? Yeah. And really trying to make sure your knee doesn't come far. And then once again, like this is, we're trying to fire the hamstring. So like if you need to balance against a wall, right? That's but good regression. You say we're doing, you want to do like a mobility activation workout, then the more stuff you can do will like balancing on one leg, stabilizing, obviously the harder it's going to be and the more you're going to kind of fire up a warm up. How's that hamstring feeling? Fire into workouts that I do at the gym, it's, it's not a whole lot of mobility. And I have bands at home too. How old is Marco? I feel like he's very young. So if he's not focusing on mobility, he's probably got good mobility because of his training, like his training age and like how young he is. And probably just those nice tendons, bro. Those tendons are probably so fluid. My, my tendons at my age, we don't have to talk about how old we are because I'm pretty old at this point but age is just a number. I always feel like I'm at least 21. Yeah, he's probably got like some fluid tendons, bro. So yeah, this is great. Yeah, like even a lot of people too, starting off, if you did mobility and then you did like two to five sets of this stuff, just to start getting your body moving. Look at that shake, That would be a lot and probably enough for a lot of people kind of looking to get into working out. Yeah. And then yeah, obviously once you get more advanced and or you get used to this, like doing this, even just doing this once a day in the morning as a workout for like a, a morning workout is always like it's good it's usually i like this when i'm feeling good i actually really like this i'm gonna add this into my workout routine this is great and again hamstring is something that we don't normally work on as volleyball athletes olympic i i do olympic weightlifting so that's what's been keeping me sharp when it comes to volleyball but my hamstrings whew, they're pretty small and they are pretty weak right now so i guess i'm gonna have to add this in my routine good this is like my favorite kind of stuff to do in the morning and then starts your day off takes you know 20 to 30 minutes depending how much you want to do and body's firing you're feeling good and start your day off kind of ready to go yo look at jordan's arms bro look at this deltoid that deltoid is huge those biceps are huge those triceps are even huger and look at these forearms he's got like massive forearms bro probably six three yo Give me those arms, bro. You yeah, know, that'll be awesome. Like my biggest thing too, it's like, especially like, well, I'm, I'm pretty much done school now, so I don't have to wake up super, super early. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. It's like all of my workouts would be like at night. Marcos is still in school? Wild. And it's just like your typical push-pull legs type stuff. Yeah. But with legs, like I'm always lifting heavy and not a whole lot of mobility work. So yeah. yeah so I'm super tight all over. How do you, how are your joints though with all the like heavy lifting? Pretty good? Actually pretty good. Nice. Not too bad. Nice. That's good. Yeah. So like, I don't know. I had like no issues when I like started doing plyos, mm. I guess just cause like I'm so used to jumping all the time. And then that's the same thing with the volleyball. Like I've never had any knee pain. Nice. No, like lucky he's never had knee pain. Wait till you get a certain age and it get it starts to get into you. I, I, again, I don't wish knee pain on anybody. So the fact that he's taking care of it and like learning the movements to take care of his knees, good for him. Right. Cause what, like, honestly, like I would say for most people, maybe it's just me, not even most people. Like I let go of myself. Not why well, I've never let go of myself. Let's be real. I have a garage gym, but like when the pandemic hit and everyone was staying home here in Cali, it was a lot of let's just work out at home, not playing volleyball. If anything, we're playing grass volleyball. And then once volleyball came back two years later, it's like all that impact was just wrecking everyone's knees because they were so excited to get back. And now we got everyone with knee pain. They're not doing their isometrics. They're not doing any injury prevention. Like, like, like a hamstring curl with a band. So, you know, again, I don't wish Marco any knee pain, 
But if it ever comes up, it's usually going to be a mobility or activation like problem, but it could also be an overuse, right? If he's practicing once a week or playing once a week, great. Last week, I played five times in the whole week and my knee is fried. Like there's fluid in it. It feels swollen. I got to sleep. I got to do an ice bath. I got to use this, this HyperX knee thing to do some icing on it. Again, I don't really need to do that, but I it's it's extra work right extra stuff that probably isn't even required and it's not but yeah training age is a huge factor hit like back pain or anything no ankle pain nice actually it's funny the one time i sprained my ankle was from badminton <laughs> oh really yeah Ooh, okay first of all if you sprained your ankle in badminton what is going on that's some high level badminton playing right there i forget i forgot he mentioned in another video that his main sports badminton and then he switched over to volleyball that's wild you might as well just play pickleball at this point. Was it like a step back or what? No, it's just like a nice lateral jump that I was gonna snatch. Oh, yeah. no. And then my feet were together. I don't know where I just... Oh, no. Oh, really? Oh, just landed crazy. on yep. the side of his foot. <laughs> That's nice the worst. Inverted ankle sprain. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. That's the non-contact injury for an ankle. I'm pretty sure the recovery was like really fast as it was non-contact. Cause when you get into those contact injury ones, whew, those are brutal. That took me like eight months to recover. I'm sure his recovery is maybe like a couple months. That's and then I was out for like two weeks. Two weeks? Oh my gosh. All right, dude. Show me a grade three ankle sprain. Watch my old videos. It'll be somewhere. Grade three ankle sprain. Took me eight months to get back on the court at like full capacity, right? With no ankle brace. <laughs> I landed with two feet. And then yeah, you're one. so used to landing like weirdly with one. Oh like, yeah, mm. I'll do. One, and then catch, and then, I don't know, I guess I'm just really good at absorbing force that way. That's, yeah, your body is just, do you play a lot of badminton? I grew up playing badminton. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, like, that uh, was my main sport before going into volleyball, mm. and, yeah, played a lot of tennis, and then got into volleyball afterwards, and then just kept playing. Okay, let me, let me go back to what he said. He's really good at absorbing force. That is solid. That is everything you need as a, not everything, but that is majority of what you need as a volleyball athlete is knowing how to absorb force not really like intentionally doing it but like allowing your body to just learn how to absorb force naturally when i was a kid i knew this i didn't know the science of it but i just knew i w i wanted to jump off really high things and make sure i can land softly like i would jump off i would go to six flags and jump jump over bushes like those really big bushes and just really make sure my landing was like soft and i was wearing vans i was like if i could do this in vans imagine what i could do in athletic shoes so yeah, absorbing force, definitely, definitely key with volleyball athletes. Yeah. Did so. Nice, interesting. Interesting. It's funny where people kind of come from. Okay, we'll do some knee drives. So Sweet. bend around our feet again, and then basically, so. Knee drives, I'm sure this is gonna be for hip flexor exercises. Before he even goes into it, he's just gonna raise his knee as high as he can. This will activate his hip flexors in the front. Let's just kind of get hip flexor, same thing. You can do this. I called it. If you want to kind of isolate that leg more, but same thing if you do it standing and you get that core working, you know, the stabilizing leg working. So just driving up the knee, kind of holding for two seconds. Called it. Back down, drive it up. Just feel that quad hip flexor kind of yeah. turn on. Same thing, like you can go against the wall, balance so it's less, but yeah. I like this one a lot more. Yeah, I was about to say, I feel like his hips I feel are pretty strong and his hip flexors are pretty strong just by how his biomechanics like are right like you can just tell like most people probably can't tell but i can tell like just by watching his movement from the other things like uh, most of the time he was comfortable leaning forward that just shows his hip flexors are probably tight a little strong not a little strong but very strong so and that's a, a position that he's very comfortable with and uh, that is a very important position not a lot of people train their hip flexors so yeah this is this is a good way to also learn how to absorb force and be in awkward positions because you need to make sure your hips are, are flexed when you are landing, right? And these guys? Oh, yeah. I'm not as tight going in this plane. Nice. Yeah. What if he goes out to the side, right? I'm curious if he gets his knee out to the side, will he feel it more that and way? So, yeah, I usually like to do like five nice and slow and then I do like a couple nice explosive up kind of thing. Okay. Just kind of get the that switch muscles firing a bit more and then do i want like oppositional arm movement but for the purpose i'm gonna of, i'm gonna move forward because oh, i don't want to see him knee kick every single time a little bit more what's so next just like a tke DK terminal knee extension so this is going to be more isometric so band kind of around the top of the calves this one's probably the band's probably a little loose for this one or really fire the quad but just bending this knee think of driving that heel down first and then flexing that quad locking out that knee interesting and then back so if you're like pressing a... yeah 
the heel down. Huh. And then yeah, lock out that knee. So you can probably even bring your foot a little closer. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm I, I'm curious as to the reason why he probably said it earlier, but I'm assuming it's to get the quad fully extended and be comfortable in that full extension. That's all I know so far. I have never done this, so let me just keep watching. And it might stabilize him. Yeah, you can have a less tight bend in this. We're not too worried about this. Same thing. You could hold the wall if you need to. We're just trying to fire that right quad right now. I knew it. It's all about firing the quad. I knew so it. Yeah, like really contracting it, squeeze a couple seconds and then back up, yeah. All right, I think we can move forward a little bit here. Feels okay. great actually. Yeah. It's like a nice little mountain muscle activation for the quads. Mm. And that's the thing, most people, knee problems comes from like, you know, quad yeah. issues or tight quads or <laughs> quads not firing properly, so. That's oh, yeah. a big one. Or, right when he said, quads not firing properly that is very very true again we we minimize we don't take seriously these stabilizer muscles and stabilizer muscles could be hey can i move in this range of motion am i comfortable in this position so when you are not comfortable going down the stairs you're getting a lot of knee pain that is your body telling you hey we are not strong enough in this position. We need to strengthen it. We got to work on something because there's a mobility restriction there or that there's a stabilizer muscle that's not being activated that needs to be activated through your daily life, daily routine. Using this band for something, you can also like tie this band around something loose and put your foot behind it and do the same kind of thing, right? But All right, I'm going to fast forward because I understand TKEs now, but like I don't want to watch him do TKEs yeah, forever. Tim braces. We'll do kind of some of that stuff in our plyo warm up, but Sweet. In this one, so we want elbows kind of shoulder width. Banded extra of, rotation. Like, I, I, you know what? I, I see where he's coming from now because I, I respect the band work because it, it makes it simple for the workout and it makes it very just convenient for the athlete. You think about it this way, like if if you have an athlete, you have all these band works, you have the mini band, you have the long band, you got the thick band. It just makes it so much of a nuisance to work out that it's like, I need to remember all these things and then it comes to a point where it's like, well, athletes like convenience. And if their workout isn't that convenient, it's like, well, why work out, right? You're just making it harder on yourself because you have so many other things to worry about. So using a mini band just definitely makes it convenient, especially for a beginner athlete, which is ideal for starters. But as you advance more, you're going to want to progress that to the thicker bands and, you know, thicker bands. Oh, we want to keep the shoulders kind of down as we go up. So it's going to get a little bit of tension. We're just going up nice and slow all the way up. Yo, I'm going to take a guess here. We're just going up nice and slow. I'm going to take a guess here. Yo, Jordan, if if you message me, I'm assuming these are soccer athletes in the background. Assuming. Let me know if I'm right. Slow all the way up and then kind of back down. Yeah, so yeah, this is, time. yeah, this is really in, good. Wrists out kind of thing as much as we can. I like this. Never done this before, but I know why this is important. Like banded extra rotation. We're, we're strengthening the scapula, rotator cuff extra rotation a lot of us volleyball players when we're when we're spiking so often we get so hung up not so hung up we get stuck in this we start to go into more internal rotation with our shoulder that we need to strengthen our external rotators just to pull us back a little bit because you can start to get into a lot of shoulder pain once you get more into inner internal rotation because your your shoulder starts to get stuck in that position and one of the bones starts to like like irritate one of your tendons and that's when the pain starts to show up so if your external rotation is not as strong yeah you're gonna start feeling it pretty soon so yeah take care of your external rotator you guys so someone with like shoulder he's got a little bit of shake but it looks like he's strong in this position yeah it could be depending on what their shoulder issues are different for everybody yeah this one is just a, another like one with this kind of band to get the shoulders firing a bit more yo did anyone realize marco's got a tattoo right here i just realized that right now i think it to me it looks like a shark Look at that. There's like the top right there. It looks like a shark. I could be wrong, but like that's just what I noticed watching the video. Harder than it looks. On the wrist? Just in general. Oh, just yeah. like because you're trying to maintain tension as mm -hmm. you're moving. And that's the thing a lot with these exercises too, right? Is like depending on they can make it harder on themselves on like how much tension you're pushing on. Yeah. Marco's got a little bit of shake at the top, but that's completely normal. Usually the top position is the hardest position for this one. Look at that. He's just locked in, bro. He's really getting in tune with his body. That was sick. Yeah, nice. Um, last one, just do some, I call them bow and arrow pulls. No, the tattoo, it, it looks like a rope now. It looks like a rope. Well, well, I'm pretty sure he'll explain it in another video or he'll just message me. So basically- Bow and arrow, down. I like this. This is most people's favorite. It's like, oh, volleyball specific, right? Just above her head a little bit. And then yeah, just kind of pulling elbow in and then back. Cool. Pretty I simple. Imagine, like all of these workouts, you can do them seated. Oh yeah, yeah. You can definitely do them seated too as well. Oh yeah. 
You guys want to sit down while doing them? <laughs> yeah. Once again, yeah, just trying to get a good full body activation workout with like one band, right? So, guys, we have Gasolina playing in the background. We're gonna get copyrighted. We can't be doing this as YouTubers. We're gonna get copyrighted, bro. Just kidding. I I really don't care. I seriously don't care. There's so much you can do. Yeah. I mean, I could, yeah. I think like the only equipment we use thus far is just a band. So there's so much work you guys can be doing for your mobility. With yeah, bands. So little equipment yeah. needed. Bands are very, very convenient. Well, that's where I, yeah, I could have brought like all these different bands out, right? But it's like yeah. how many people actually have that availability to them. Exactly. We just talked about bands and like the convenience of it, right? And like not a lot of people have access to all these bands. So this is a great video for the beginners or like for the intermediate people trying to get better at volleyball. So this is, Jordan and I, we're on the same page, bro. We're on the same page. He gets it. He just gets it. Yeah. Do it with the machine. So just kind of figured that, yeah, you bring one band, a foam roller, another band maybe, and you kind of get to go to get warm and get mobile, so. That's sick. Sweet. Yeah, guys, get a band. So yeah, if you guys are clueless about what's- Marco, if you have a band in your affiliate link, put it in, or your, your description, Put it in there. People will buy it. I promise you people will buy it. It's just, you got good content. They trust you. You're very likable, very humble. They'll they'll buy it, dude. Do now, hopefully this helps up with your guys' mobility, but I think we're gonna get into the harder stuff. The harder stuff? Oh no, now we, now he made us, he, he, he cliffhanged us. Marco's so good at content creation, he cliffhanged us. That's amazing. Anyway, I personally love this video. Learned a lot from it. I think a lot of volleyball players can definitely get a lot of value out of this. So, you know, great job. Props to you for being able to even film your workouts because I would not be able to do this. I'm just so locked in with my workout that I'm just like, bro, I can't be explaining my workouts because I got to focus on my next workout, my next tournament, filming content. You got Alex. I'm so jealous you have an Alex. Can can I borrow Alex for like a day? Not even a day. Just just sell me Alex. Send him over to Cali. Send him over. I'll definitely pay him almost near nothing. And uh, yeah, Alex, I'll see you soon. Anyway, peace out, guys. I, I hope you enjoyed my somewhat. I'm probably not even funny at this point. I'm just going to be serious and I'm just going to keep it that way because the internet will be the internet. So yeah, if you guys are new, subscribe, like the video, and don't forget to subscribe to mkvb marco's got really good content follow his instagram too he's probably going to be famous on instagram as well and follow jordan if jordan's at is in here yep the healthy human it's in the description follow him healthy human jt he's got really good content he messages me great guy yeah i'm looking forward to i think the next one's going to be plyos guys we'll be watching his plyo video and then i want to see his strength workout i think it's going to be very very like standard stuff but also i think we're going to get a lot of value out of it so i will be at usav nationals by the making of this video or by the time this is out i'm going to post this today good thing i got ai to edit my stuff now so that's great but yeah whenever his video comes out i will react to it when i get back from usav nationals and if you guys are new subscribe peace